understand and to repeat what the Lord said to me in an audible voice after sh translating me into the future and showing me what's coming. He said, I will protect that which is mine. And everything else will be destroyed. And wow. Shannon, he said that destroyed word so loud, I can't even yell that loud. Wow. I mean, it was like thunder. You know, I got the impression he had slammed his fist on the armchair of his throne in heaven, and the heavens had shook. It was so loud. And, you know, Jesus meant what he said. He is going to protect the ones that are his. And he can protect you from an EMP. He can protect you from a five million degree furnace. He can protect you from anything. And if he doesn't protect you, if Jesus doesn't give his angels charge over you, then everyone else will be destroyed. And I don't care how much gold you've got or food. I mean, it's great. You know, sure, try to store up your wealth to protect yourself from the day of judgment. But the scripture tells us the gold will be removed and the silver will be thrown in the streets. And, you know, whatever we have will be taken from us. If we don't have the protection and the favor of the Lord, we're yes. done. You know? And if you're not going to repent, then go eat, drink, and be merry because you are going to die. Because this judgment is coming at the appointed time. I'm not trying to save my life. The Lord even says, whoever shall seek to save his life will lose it. So, you know, if you're worried about trying to save your life in Babylon, you're already lost. If you're trying to save your life in the flesh, you're done. You lost. Work. And whoever will lose their life for Jesus' sake, he will preserve it. And, you know, so we're all dead men walking. You know, the, the only way out of here is through the cross. The only way to protect our, our families and our loved ones is for us to give our lives to the Lord. Now, for some people, that's like a really hard thing because they really love their life. You know, they were rich, you know, they ate the best food and they enjoyed all the pleasures of Babylon and they want to make Babylon great again so they can enjoy the lust of the flesh and the pride of life. That's what it's all about. It has nothing to do with the kingdom. They don't want to stop the murder of the babies. They want to keep eating the hamburgers. But, you know, the Lord is going to stop the, the slaughter of the innocents. And if you knew what was going on today, you know, it talks about the, the woman being drunk with the blood of the innocent, the blood of the saints. They are literally engaging in, in horrific abuse in torture in order to achieve maximum pain in these small children who are there then killing and drinking God, the blood to, to, because of the intoxication, the high that you can get by drinking the adrenaline. And the scripture is literally being fulfilled. They are drinking the blood of the innocent, intoxicated and, and high on the blood of innocent children. And we want this to continue? Not my, I'm not no going way. for that. The Lord's had enough. You know, but in his great mercy, he's telling his people exactly what he's about to do. Keep Shannon and I in your prayers, you guys. We've, you know, it, it has not um, escaped our notice that uh, to come forward and, and to tell you all these things over the Internet, um, you know, might not be the safest thing for us to do, aside from the deliverance of God. You know, as, as my friend Johnny Baptist said, we got targets on our backs the size of Texas. So we, we, we definitely need your prayers. But, yeah. Shannon, is it not obvious that this has come upon us? Brother, it is. Dear God, I, I see the perfect setup for the fulfillment of everything God has shown you and the other prophets out there of the end times. Invasion of America. But you know what, Shannon? It's going to be okay. I mean, I, I've got people that are, you know, part of the, a prayer army that, that, that stands in, 
and you know lifts my hands in prayer because you know the forces again they would love to shut me up the enemy wants to shut me down because i'm bringing the megaton of truth and so i've got a prayer army of of you know intercessors that are standing with me in prayer so that i can continue to preach the truth and you know within that prayer army shannon there are single moms that they are barely able to Amen. put food on the table for their kids you know, there are people that don't have any provision to prepare for anything. But you know what? It doesn't matter. The Lord is able to deliver them. Yes. You know, the, the remnant who get delivered are going to be the little humble people who, who didn't try to save their life. You know, the remnant was willing to lose their life for Jesus' sake. And, I mean, in reality, none of us are staying here anyway. Amen. We don't stay on this planet. We don't stay in this life. We're all headed into eternity. And you know what? Whatever reward we receive is going to be a function of what we've done here at the time that remains. And you know the rewards that, that Jesus gives his people for their faithful service and for the things that they've done through the power of his Holy Spirit? It's not that we would be glorified. These are the gifts that we're going to take to the wedding feast to give to the Lord. Amen. These are the things that we can do to honor Him. You know, look, we're all worthless without Him. I mean, on our Amen. best day, left to our own devices, the best we do is wood, hay, and stubble. And none of us are different. That's just what we are. We're just flesh. Without His Holy Spirit, we can't do the things of the kingdom. But thank God he's called us to be one with him and to walk in the fullness of his Holy Spirit. And that needs to be our focus now, is to cultivate the, the power and the walk of the Holy Spirit. We need to be you know, thinking through what are all the things we need to do to learn how to walk in the fullness of the Holy Spirit and to increase the presence and the anointing of the Lord in our lives. And, you know, fasting and prayer is a big part of it. And, you know, if you guys, if you don't know the science of fasting, go get a copy of the book, Fasting and Eating for Health. It's written by a medical doctor named Joel Furman, F-U-H-R-M-A-N, and it's all about the science of the amazing health and healing properties of fasting. And you add to your fasting prayer, and you have these amazing spiritual deliverance and healing properties. And, you know, we're living in a, in a world where our food has been poisoned. Boy, that's true. By chemical design. Right, Shannon? Food's poison. Sure is. Glyphosate, Processed that is all. food is poison. Absolutely, my brother. It's all contaminated. You know what? They did a study, too, and they the said just about... Shannon, the high fructose corn syrup oh, is man. chemically very similar to cocaine. It is. And people have become addicted to the sugar, the salt, and the processed foods, and we've all become food addicts. It's true. And, and this food is literally destroying our ability to discern spiritually. It's literally clouding the frontal lobe of our minds and it's affecting our memories along with the, the chemical spraying of the atmosphere and the poisoning of the water and, and all of the poison in the environment, the poison in all of the produced chemical plastic products that we live, move, and, and, and touch our life every day. We're completely being being poisoned with all these toxic chemicals. You fast, and it detoxes you. Go on the Gerson site, G-E-R-S-O-N, Gerson.org, and look at the detox using uh, coffee detoxing to, to cleanse your system. You guys, you can get the poison out of you, and you can cleanse your mind, and you can begin to hear the Lord, and you begin to enter into the anointing. i got to tell you, Shannon, when I fast, and, and I've been, you know, kind of a regular, you know, periodically fasting, um, I, many, you know, several times during the year I will fast and pray for, yes. 
for a period of time, and in even one day, you can feel the difference in the anointing. When you go into your prayer closet and you've been fasting for that day, and you call out on, and you seek the Lord, you can just feel the difference. I mean, Jesus told us, this kind only can come out, only can be defeated That's right. fasting and prayer. You know, and Jesus himself fasted and prayed. The disciples didn't until the Lord's resurrection. But during his ministry here, the Lord fasted. Many times he prayed all through the night and then went and ministered again the next day. And, you know, the church, we, we view Christianity as a spectator sport. And we think if we just believe and, you know, we go to church, we hear a little Bible study, we tune in and listen to a little blog talk, you know, and we watch the news. Everybody's watching the news, you know, watching all these things be fulfilled. Turn off the news. You can lose the news. You need to find the Lord. It's coming to pass, and it's coming to a town near you, and it's ultimately coming down your street, and it's ultimately going to be at your front door, and you're going to deal with it either through the power of your flesh or you're going to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. And what you learn between now and then in the knowledge of good and evil is irrelevant. But what you accomplish in fasting and prayer and in building yourself up in the power of, Holy, of the Holy Spirit, through that you will possess your soul. And so, you know, Satan wants us all glued to the Internet so that the flashing images of the computer screen will do disassociation programming on the alpha waves in your head so you become an even more brainwashed zombie. And so you won't do any of the things the Lord's command you to do. Instead, you'll just continue to watch the fulfillment of all this evil, and it's going to wax worse and worse. I remember the Lord telling me, lose the news. And you know what? The more you disengage from Babylon, and the more you spend your time in the Word of God, and in prayer, and in worship, the more you separate yourself coming out of the Babylonian system, the more profound your life begins to change. And so I've told you tonight, the judgment is nigh. And indeed, look around you, open your eyes, wake from your sleep, it's happening right in our very midst. So let's get ready. Let's call those solemn assemblies, you guys. Get your couple closest friends who are, who are serious about getting right with the Lord and get together and fast and pray for a weekend, and confess your sins one to another precisely as the Master commanded, and then pray for your families, pray for the remnant, pray for Shannon and I, pray for the word of the Jeez. Lord to go forth, pray for the salvation of the lost, and let's do the job we were called to do for our great and awesome King. Amen. Let's pray. Amen. Father, I thank you that you have brought your word of truth to the people. Father, I pray you would grant discernment, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to every heart that's been pricked by your word. Lord, I pray you would confirm the word of truth. And Lord, that you would pour out your Holy Spirit and grant unto your people the peace that passes understanding. And Lord, also the quiet assurance that you are in control and that you've already promised you're going to protect those that are yours and that we merely have to stand back and watch the salvation of our God. For Lord, this is your day. But Lord, we also have to be people that are diligent to do all that you've commanded. And we cannot deceive ourselves by continuing to walk in sin and compromise. We have to put down and put away every unclean thing from our lives. So I pray you, your Holy Spirit would convict each and every one of us in whatever areas of our lives are not quite yet in order, that, Lord, we could repent and we could humble ourselves and we could turn from our wicked ways and that we could call upon you and seek you and find you when we search for you with all of our hearts. And Lord, most of all, I pray for the little children that are represented by all of the listeners that are here. Lord, we, we in this last generation, Lord, we've in so many ways fallen so short. We've been a people of compromise. We've been a people who've been deceived, Lord. 
And I'm sure we've been a great disappointment in many ways to you. But, Lord, we are your people, and so you've never forsaken us. But, God, for the little children in our midst, for the innocent ones in our midst, I pray, Lord, that you would deliver the children. Lord, they, if any are worthy among us, Lord, it's the little ones. I pray you would work your awesome power to, to deliver the innocent children, Lord. They would be able to to be preserved, and, and Lord, that they would be found among your remnant, hidden away in your secret hiding place, until the day when the sign of the Son of Man appears in the heavens, and until we hear the the sound of the last and final trumpet, and Lord, we are changed and translated, and we meet you in the clouds on the way to Jerusalem. So, Lord, we love you. We thank you. Lord, we owe everything to you. Pray, God, that that we could walk uprightly before you, Lord, and that you would deliver us from all the deceptions. Lord, I also pray that you would reveal to us who these false teachers are, that, that your people would no longer be snared by the ones who came in their own name and were not sent by you. Lord, that the people would know to just turn them off at this point. And, Lord, that we would all just get into our prayer closets and make ready for, indeed, the day of the Lord is truly at hand. And in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.